Today, we time travel to Thailand and explore three markets, all within 20 minutes of each other. We go to Ampawa Floating Market, Damnan Sarawak Floating Market, and the Meklong Railway Market. Each one has its unique characteristics, and if you're short on time, I hope this video helps you in deciding which market to go to. Hey guys, I'm currently at the Meklong Market. This market is famous for the train that goes by right in the middle of all these vendors. Up to eight times a day, vendors make way for the train. Oh, I guess that's the announcement for the train. But which direction is it coming from? Well, the train actually comes in quite slowly. See there, it's peeping in. And immediately the awnings swing back open and the tables are rolled out. And it's business as usual. As you can see, the train tracks are lined with rows of fresh produce and piles of dried seafood. The air smells salty and fishy. You can also take food to go. These pokey orange fruits are called gak. Not sure how to pronounce it in Thai. Here's what it looks like in the inside. Let's hop into the tuk-tuk and head to our accommodation. Had no idea this hostel was surrounded by all this nature and over a dozen coconuts lie on the ground with more hanging out on the tree. Watch your head, sometimes they fall. And now we're gonna head over to Ampawa Floating Market. Oh, our tuk-tuk is here. Sodika! After thanking the driver, we take a few steps and voila! The first food stall we encounter sells lasagna. And yes, that's a happy Garfield. There's also a bubbling bowl of fish and prawn on banana leaf ready to go. Wow, what are all these pink treats? They look like a bending silhouette of a Hershey's Kiss and they fit together like a puzzle. It's Saturday and the evening is slowly creeping in. Welcome to Ampawa Floating Market. The canal is lined with food, shops, and tourist boats. A vendor grills clam on a wooden boat. We'll be eating seafood there later. Boat vendors are docked right next to each other. One woman grills squid as another stir fries. First round of munchies coming on up. Rows of scallop are covered in cheese and sauce. A set of six pieces goes for 100 baht, which is roughly three US dollars. They've also got little bits of chive. Ooh, this looks good. It's cheesy, but also limey and spicy. It might look simple, but the flavor is definitely much more complex than it looks. Check out the Pad Thai action. The rice noodles are blanketed with bean sprout, scallion, crumbled peanut, shrimp, and a wedge of lime. For whatever reason, this tastes like the healthiest Pad Thai I've ever had. And the bowl is made of banana leaf. The layers are held together with a biodegradable staple. I'm guessing it's bamboo. Hey, just notice the raw scallion. Camouflaging into the banana leafy plate cover. These are fish cakes. Skewered cuttlefish, pots of curry, all looking so yum. Sambani. Sambani? And look at how precious these small little cookies are. Thinner than my pinky. Here they give out samples. More samples. I'm guessing this is coconut. Wow, look at the moon. It goes so beautifully with the rest of the scene. And right, so here's a sample. It looks like very thin noodles, like vermicelli noodles, but rice crispy fine. It's a little bit sweet and savory. What's that? I want to say that's frog leg. Hey cutie, it's a pug in a front carrier. Kind of like the ones they have for babies. Crossing to the other side of the bridge, sightseeing boats for tourists pass by. Whichever side of the canal you go, there's something delicious. Dessert and clay pots. We'll be trying one of those later. These custard apples look like giant green raspberries. All right, 
All right, guys, who's ready for some boat food? Narrow tables and sitting blocks are set up right next to the water, and the menus are in Thai and English. First up are the large prawns. The meat turns out to be super creamy and smoky. If your hands get messy and you need napkins, you have to buy the napkins, FYI. Soon after, the pink plate of grilled calamari enters the scene. Texture wise, not too rubbery. Saucing up a calamari, the crab arrives on a floral plate. What is that? Is it? It looks like there's a crab inside. Whoa! If you really think about it, seafood looks like aliens. They look so mutant. The bowls and to-go boxes are hanging on for dear life on that pole. For dessert, there's kanon mokeng, mung bean custard. Each clay pot goes for 30 baht, which is about a dollar. I thought that they would give me a spoon and make me finish it on the spot, but no, they gave me the whole pot with the lid. I didn't need to, but I ended up buying a souvenir. And it looks handmade. Some sort of a topping. Very sugary. Actually, the topping is sweeter than the custard itself. And the custard kind of reminds me of a steamed egg, like teranjin. Finish my custard. This is masaman. Wow, look at that glorious steam. Offered as a sample are a pile of sea grapes. Also called green caviar, these are a type of seaweed. It's salty in an ocean kind of way, but very mild in flavor overall. It's almost time for us to go home. I'm inside my room now, and I kind of like this. I've always wanted a canopy over my bed. However, this is a mosquito net. About 15 minutes away from Ampawa Floating Market is the Damnan Sadowak Floating Market. And this time, we shall ride a wooden boat. It's 150 baht per person for 40 minutes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Which is a little under $5 in today's currency exchange. And there's a lady here who just joined with us. Part of the fun is your boat. It's like a, a bumper cart experience. Hopefully when you ride this, you're not afraid of water because the boat will sway back and forth. <laughs> One of the passengers is sharing her fruit. Oh! Oh, it's a little dry and bitter. It's getting close to 9 a.m., uh, which is when a lot of tourists start flocking in, and by 10, there'll be boat jams. Ooh, Victoria's Secret! Sadika! <laughs> Thank you. 40 baht. During the ride, we saw more souvenir shops than boat food. The paddler frequently stopped at shops. After all, they potentially get a commission for any sales. Prices tend to be inflated, so be sure to haggle. Keep in mind, this particular boat ride had no tour guide. I finished my coconut. What about the meat? Oh, I brought my handy dandy spoon. Drive through a currency exchange. Oh. Hi. <laughs> To stack so many hats on the edge of the boat, that takes confidence. I think there's more coming up. Some food boats are docked, so they are accessible by foot. No need to get on a boat to get to them. Back on land, what shall we eat? Why, boat noodles, of course. This gentleman offers a variety of noodles, including senyai and senlek. They are served in soup broth with veggies and meat. If you're not in a noodly mood, have it with rice instead. There's a bit of a language barrier, so instead of picking the ingredients myself, we do chef's choice. The boat vendor adds in very wide noodles into the soup broth. Toppings are hidden under the nudes. The broth tastes strongly of dried shrimp, and I mean that in the best possible way. We have bits of pork, pig blood curd, and cilantro. The superstar flavor of the dish is dried shrimp. Can't taste too much of anything else. One of the joys of eating this dish is not just the dish itself. It's about the environment, sitting with locals next to a canal on a humid day, sweating and becoming one with the broth. Few steps away is another boat selling noodles, as well as steamed flour with coconut filling. For the vegans and vegetarians, there are also bananas and green mangoes. A woman cuts Thai guava, preparing a to-go bag in advance. If you want to ride a boat, I highly recommend coming early in the morning, especially if you're pressed for time. 
It's past 10 a.m. and there's a traffic jam, making this patch of open space look so appetizing. From the bridge, we witness an undocked vendor frying bananas. I'm told all the boats with rectangular covers are the ones dedicated for tourists. Yes, there's a lot of tourists here. This is food, but before opening the banana leaf packages, can we just take a moment and admire how each one is folded into neat pyramids? What's inside, you ask? Kanom Sai Sai, also called Kanom Sod Sai. It's very uh, jiggly. Whoa! This dessert is made with palm sugar, coconut, and rice flour. It's really good. I thought it'd be completely sweet, but there's a smoky flavor to it. It's incredible. I, I don't know how to describe it, but to say that's incredible. It's also very sticky. I'm at a loss for words. I could eat 50 of these pieces and still want more. Cool. So I did some shopping. Originally this bag was 550, but we haggled it down to 350 because I only had 500 baht left of money, so I cannot use everything. Next up is Kanam Buang. There are variations. These ones have coconut cream and egg yolk threads, then gently fold it in half as it comes off the heat. It almost looks like a taco with like cheese on it and sour cream. Yeah, it's kind of tall. Squish it down. It's not too sweet. This is a good one. Ten baht. And it's my like sixth or fifth time, sixth, seventh time having this. The light orange filling is the sweeter one. The dark orange filling is more savory. These ones are crowned with salty shrimp or shredded coconut. Also contains coconut cream. Squish it down so it's biteable. Thank you. Oh, that's more flavorful than the previous one. That one has some pepper in it and it is saltier. I've been having the hardest time finding postcards in Thailand, so I super appreciate encountering this collection. Our rideshare has arrived. Dragonflies. We just made it back to Ampa Floating Market. We came here uh, last night. But we're back for more. Our minibus for Bangkok is scheduled to leave at 1.20, so we have some time to kill. Let's squeeze in a few snacks. Okay, last night we had these scallops and they were so tasty that we need to get it again before we leave Ampawa. Oh, it's almost ready! So much flavor packed in that. The cheesiness, the spiciness, the flavor makes you feel super excited. It's like similar as the excitement you get right before a date. Oh, it's hot. Ooh. A bee twerks on a syrupy ball. I understand. I love sweet stuff too. Let's try one of these guys. We have about a good 15 minutes left until we have to leave for our bus stop. Let me see if I can take in a little meal. Wow, check out the seating area. Very narrow. I'm sold. We're dining here. Very thin noodles served in a coconut bowl. Also see scallion and protein. You get to choose what type of noodle you want with the soup. And the thin noodle is perfect with it. It's like so delicate. I have to say, I enjoy the actual noodles more than the soup. It was on the tasty side, but uh, it was definitely compared to your normal Thai food. It's not like as spicy, nor as sweet. It's also a and a half of kind of tea. It's time to head back to Bangkok. It'll take a little over an hour by minibus, which is like a van but fits more people. The minute we arrive to Victory Monument, we come across a cart selling skewers. Mmm, spicy. Beef balls with chili on it. A billboard for KFC featuring cheese, chicken pizza. The nuggets act as a pizza base and crust. My friend Mickey invites my friends and I for dinner at her place in Bangkok. She's an elderly woman with an incredible zest for life and has an eye for finding beautiful items in ordinary places, then making an artful collection of them inside her home. These are traditional Thai broomsticks and woven rice baskets. 
what I thought would be a casual dinner gradually reveals itself to be a thoughtful feast. This dark purple-blue drink is made from pea flower petals, first placed in boiling hot water, then iced. The rest of the evening, I focus on conversation, so instead of extensively vlogging, I'll let the food speak for itself. So which floating market should you go to? Here's my opinion. Damnan Sadawak floating market was very touristy. I'm glad I went once, but likely won't go again. I much prefer Klonglat Mayong floating market, which happens to be much closer to central Bangkok. However, if you have to choose between the three markets featured in this video, I will go with Ampawa floating market and eat seafood by the docked boat. It was such a mood to sit by the canal under the moonlight as boats passed by. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've been to these floating markets or other markets, which do you prefer and why? Let us know in the comment section. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. Pretend the wires aren't there. Okay, there's a lot of people wearing black and dark colors or even white and yellow because a couple days ago the king passed away so I tried to wear dark clothes as well I didn't have black nor white and yellow mm. Coco Cup! Oh, this one has black sesame on it You can tell it's hot because I am sweaty 